Um, and as we, as we all know, uh, data generally isn't useful on its own. Um, but what happens uh, when consuming this data becomes part of the fabric of our entire culture, not just the academic or business elite? Um, what are the implications beyond this room for the rest of the world? Um, what happens when the communi these communication systems um, are part of almost every social interaction we have? Um, here to discuss these topics is Fernanda Villegas, research scientist at Google. Fernanda received her PhD from MIT Media Lab and has been exploring the intersection between art and science throughout her career. Um, I've actually had the pleasure of uh, hearing Fernanda speak at the I.O. conference a few years ago. Very excited to have her share her work for us today at Create Tech. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thanks for, uh, for having me. Um, so it's exciting to see that the previous presenters all had visualizations in their presentations. And um, that obviously makes me very excited. That's what I do. That's what I think about pretty much all the time is data visualization. And I've been working at it uh, for long enough that I've seen a big arc taking place. And this is a little bit of what I want to talk about today. Visualization started out as a very sort of um, ivory tower for expert only kind of thing. Um, and today it's a mainstream way of communicating data. In fact, I used to joke that visualization is sort of your gateway drug to statistics. It's how you get people talking and looking at data. And so this is what visualization used to look like back in the 90s and when it was done mainly by men in very high-powered industrial labs and academic labs. Um, today, thankfully, it's very, very different. And I'm happy to tell you that we use better colors as well, if you know what you're doing. Uh, visualization today looks more like this, as I'm sure all of you know, right? Um, so this is none of, none of this here is my work. Um, it's just work that I really like. Um, and it's work that touches on data that comes from all different kinds of aspects of our lives. And these projects, even though they're all data visualization projects, are done with very different intents and with very different audiences in mind. And this is a little bit about what I want to talk about today. Um, you know, a couple of these projects come from journalism. One of them is an art project, and the other one is an activism project. Um, and you may not know, knowing at them, looking at them, and just, you know, knowing that they are data visualization projects. And one of the things that, that I think, I'm going to actually go back a little bit, one of the things that I think you can tell just by looking at them, even though you may not realize what the data is, the very, the top one on the left comes from the New York Times, and it was basically the most popular story that they had last year. Uh, and it had to do with the, the dialect in the US, how we say different words. And people were creating their own individual maps about how you say, how do you speak? And how does it connect to the rest of the country? Um, and people were sharing this like crazy. Um, the other, the one on, top, on the top right is a art piece about flight patterns in the US, which is very beautiful. Um, the one at the bottom left is about uh, gun murders in the US. So you get a sense of just the diversity. Another thing that I think brings them together, though, is just complexity. You're seeing very complex data here. This is not your usual bar chart, right? And that makes a difference. When we talk about complexity in data, usually the first impulse that people have, and it's a very benign impulse, is to simplify things, is to make things simple, simple so that non-experts can understand. And what I want to do today is talk about the importance of complexity and how complexity can actually help you and can actually um, help you open up to different audiences. So it's unintuitive, but it's actually worth uh, thinking about a little bit. So I'm going to start with a project um, we did at Google that looks at social networks. And everybody wants to visualize social networks. It's like one of the, these things everybody, everybody wants to see. And the problem is you usually end up with this. You end up with a hairball, right? And the hairball is fine. It's very intuitive, right? You're just drawing little connections between people. The problem is what can you understand from this? Not much, right? All I know is that there's a big cluster of people. So 
we knew we didn't want to do this. We wanted to do something different. Okay, and that's how uh, we ended up working with the Google Plus folks to do a visualization that showed inf information flow in the network. So how do how do people share URLs in Google Plus? So I give you a little primer on how the visualization works. This is this is called Ripples. It's on Google Plus, and basically what we do is in this case. Volkswagen shared a video they had made on YouTube. They shared it on, on Google+. And whenever followers of, uh, of Volkswagen reshare, we draw an edge here. So this user reshared, this other user reshared, and so forth. And then you can get people resharing down the stream from you, and these bubbles start to grow. OK? That's all it is. Um, now, this actually, even though you wouldn't know by looking at this, turned out to be a very, very successful video. It was uh, for the Super Bowl. It was an ad where there was a bunch of dogs singing the Star Wars songs. Um, and so it went viral. This does not look viral. But this does. So this is the entire graph of the actual sharing in the network. And I'll, I'll show you. Yeah, let me see if I can do this big. Yeah, so this is the entire graph. And um, you can start to see a couple of things. One is that there's this person in the middle, Chris Brillo, who is huge, right? Not only does he have a lot of followers, but a lot of followers reshared from him. And I can start to you know, highlight what it is that he said. Um, this person reshared from him, Josh Armour. If I click here, I start to see the thread going down from Josh to Sarah to Silky, to Simon, and so forth. And I can go back and see the entire forest. Each one of these circles is a tree of sharing. Okay, It's one conversation that shares that URL. So you can see just how big this forest is. Um, and you can see the different patterns. right? You can see that this person had a lot of individuals who were shared, and it didn't go anywhere. But then you get these interesting little threads of a lot of uh, resharing content. Another thing that I find interesting is if we look here, Volkswagen, the creator of the content, is here. They happen to be this tiny circle here. So if I click here, that's the circle I was showing you before. Volkswagen not having a whole lot of influence there, right? Um, individual users having a ton more pull um, than Volkswagen. Um, and so by looking at this graph, you start to get a lot more structure to the way these things are shared than a hairball. And let me go back to showing you a couple more different patterns. This is a different video that was shared, and this is what we call a celebrity pattern. This is this person, Felicia Day, is somewhat of a small celebrity on G+. And as soon as she shared a video, a ton of her followers reshared, and then that's it. It sort of fizzled out. It's very, very broad, but very shallow. Um, very different sharing um, pattern than this uh, URL here, which happens to be to a petition to the White House. Um, and you can see that you start to have a different set of communities coming in here. We also have a timeline at the bottom that shows you the activity. So you can see that there is a lot of sharing in the beginning, then it dies down. Then over here, Tim O'Reilly comes in, starts sharing, and boom, it picks up again. So you get a sense of how this network evolves over time as well. And then I want to finish uh, this project here showing one that's more personal to me. So this is a map of um, <clears throat> information flow of a visualization that I did with my collaborator, Martin Wattenberg. We did a visualization about wind. Okay, I'll show, I'll show that later. Um, and we shared it on Google+, and we had no idea who was going to share or if people cared about visualizing the wind. And it turns out that a lot of people did. And the cool thing, because this is our data and we were interested, it was sort of a mirror, right? We put it out and we started just seeing this graph grow and, and people popping in and, and sharing and, and resharing is that we actually cared enough to see who they were. And we started seeing, oh, there's a huge diversity of people who are into wind. Who would have known? You know, air quality scientist, OK. A comedian, Z Frank. Does anyone know Z Frank here? Yeah. 
Z Frank was sharing that visualization. I'm like, yeah, score. Um, mathematicians, New York Times journalists, you name it. So you start to get, because it shows you more of the structure of the data, you start to get this richness, this diversity and texture for what's happening. So this is the kind of data that sort of, I think all of us can relate to because this is social network, it's communicating things, it's sharing things. It's very easy data to understand. But what happens when you have very complicated data that you need to share with an audience? So this was another uh, project we did at Google called the Digital Attack Map. And here, the data itself is very technical. It's about uh, denial of service attacks. So these are times when a computer or a website will be completely overwhelmed with aggressive um, pings from other machines. And this is done on purpose. It's, it's um, to put it down, to put a website down or to shut down a service, okay? And this is something that started out years ago um, as just playful things that hackers were trying to do to other websites. And then it became something that criminals did. And then it became something that governments do. So today, governments do this all the time, it turns out. And nobody had visualized this. It's very hard data to come by.